My month with Fedora KDE, the full truth. Tired of an OS that gets in the way. For 30 days, I ran Fedora KDE as my only computer. No dual boot, no safety net. From video editing and browsing to light gaming and daily work. Did it hold up? Let's dive in. One line promise. In this video, I'll walk you through why I chose Fedora KDE, how the install and setup went, what surprised me, what annoyed me, and whether it can replace Windows or Mac OS for everyday use. Why Fedora KDE? I picked the Fedora KDE experience because Fedora's KDE offering is current, tightly integrated with the latest KDE stack, and ships as an official desktop image in Fedora's release lineup. Fedora Linux 42 KDE Plasma Desktop was released April 15, 2025. If you care about running the latest Plasma features and Fedora's upstream first philosophy, this combination is worth testing. Expectations going in. My goals. Stable day-to-day -day productivity. Email, office, web. Content creation, light video editing and image work. And casual gaming. I wanted to see how Plasma's modern UI and Wayland era improvements feel under real workload. Responsiveness, battery life, laptops, app compatibility, and how much fiddling was required. First impressions and install. Installation was straightforward. Fedora's KDE image uses the standard Fedora installer, and the process took about the same time as other modern distros. Early setup steps I recommend. Enable third-party repos if you need codecs or proprietary drivers. Install Flatpak for apps not in Fedora repos. And set up your preferred keyboard shortcuts and Plasma layout right away. I hit only minor packaging quirks, nothing that stalled my setup. Daily grind, performance and responsiveness. Browser performance. Web pages, tabs, and developer tools were snappy. I used Chromium slash Firefox builds from Fedora and some flat packs. Both behaved well. Office and productivity apps, LibreOffice, cross-platform apps, open quickly and background memory use was reasonable. Creative apps. For light video editing, KDEN Live, and photo work, GIMP, the system was competent. Export times depend on CPU, GPU. Not magical, but predictable. For heavier video projects, I still relied on a render machine. But for 1080p edits, Fedora KDE was solid. Gaming. Steam Proton titles I tested ran similarly to other modern distributions. Some titles needed Proton tweaks. GPU drivers and Steam installation through RPM Fusion made the difference. KDE Plasma features that helped. Plasma's layout and customization are huge productivity wins virtual desktop workflows, window tiling shortcuts, and the floating slash resizable panels in Plasma 6 make a clean, efficient workspace. Discover, the App Store, has improved, but it still misses some packaged apps or newer versions. Flatpak filled the gaps. Wayland Improvements, part of the modern KDE stack, made screen scaling and multi-monitor handling smoother in my testing. Though a small number of apps showed Wayland-specific quirks, screen recording, legacy toolkits, that required a switch to X11 or alternate tools for short periods. Stability and bugs. Across 30 days, I saw a few transient bugs. Panel hiccups after sleep, one or two GPU driver resets on a certain kernel update, and an occasional app crash. Nothing catastrophic, and Fedora's release cadence and package updates meant fixes arrived quickly during the month. If you rely on absolute, rock-solid behavior for mission-critical work, test your exact app stack before migrating. Community and documentation. How helpful were they? Fedora's docs and the KDE community are active and responsive. A lot of problems I hit had documented workarounds or forum threads. When I needed commands or troubleshooting steps, Fedora Magazine and the Fedora Docs made it easy to follow official guidance. Unexpected delights and hidden gems. Two surprises. One, Plasma's power user shortcuts save time daily. Window snapping, quick search. And two, visual polish, subtle theming and animation. 
made long work sessions less tiring. Also, Fedora's packaging meant I got fairly up-to-date KDE gear and Plasma releases without jumping distros. Lingering doubts. Potential deal breakers. If you need proprietary software that only supports Windows and Mac OS, some niche creative suites, DRM-laden apps, or you need guaranteed vendor support for enterprise software, switching could be risky. Also, some high-end gaming setups might still perform slightly better on a carefully tuned Windows machine due to driver Proton Edge cases. Final verdict. After 30 days. Fedora KDE is a compelling daily driver for productivity, light creative work, and general use. It's modern, fast, and surprisingly polished. For most tech-savvy users and content creators on a budget or who prefer open source, it's absolutely worth trying. If your workflow depends on a single proprietary app or certified vendor software, keep a backup plan. Call to action and sign off. Thinking of switching? Try Fedora KDE in a VM or as a live image first. Back up everything and test your core apps. If you want my exact package list, tweaks, or a guide for gaming on Fedora KDE, drop a comment. I'll make follow-ups. If you liked the video, hit like and subscribe for more Linux experiments.